Hi, welcome to the first module of lecture 10, which is the first lecture of three in the part four of this class, of this course, on linear algebra. Now, linear algebra as a topic um, is a pretty broad one, covering, in general, linear equations and systems of linear equations. We'll discuss it a lot more, actually, in the next lecture. In this lecture, we're going to focus on the nuts and bolts of dealing with vectors and matrices. Now, why is that? Well, the reason is that oftentimes in political science and all the social sciences, we'll have called to deal with um, linear equations and manipulate the various um, representations of these equations in the form of vectors and matrices. The two most common ways you'll see are one in stats when dealing with variables and data. As we'll see later in this lecture, you can represent um, data as for each variable as a vector, where you have different components of the vector. Um, here it could be y1, y2, and then it continues along that path down to yn. This would mean n data points, and since it's a y, we tend to think of this as n data points of our dependent variable. You might have a bunch of those with x in it for your independent variable. Um, if you have more than one independent variable, you can put them into a matrix that might look like this, where you have and each one of these columns corresponds to a bunch of data and data points for the first variable. Um, and then you have for the second variable and so on. And we'll do much more of this as we go through this. Um, lecture, but the idea is you can represent data for one or more variables via vectors and matrices, and then use these vectors and matrices to directly compute things like coefficients of linear regressions. If you've come to this point by going through straight through all the other parts of the class, you'll have seen examples um, of beta, the coefficient for linear regression, how we calculated that for one, one data point using um, calculus, the optimization lecture. In this case, um, we will do this same idea for more than one data point. And we'll have an explicit example of that near the end of this lecture. You also see this often in game theory. In game theory, when you're trying to solve for optimal behavior, when you have two players, you often have two linked equations. You might have player one wants to do, you know, three times player what player two does plus one, and player two wants to do one half of what player one does, minus two. I don't know if this works, by the way, I ended up on this fly. But the idea is you have to solve for x and x1 and x2, which involves solving the system of linear equations. And that also can be aided by matrices and vectors. That will also do. So these are the two major topics. That, these will be the two major areas you'll see often. And then as you go on, there'll be other um, sort of more advanced um, types of research that you can use the techniques involving vectors and matrices with, for instance, Markov chains, when you're, trying to, when you're trying to have a Markov chain or trying to use a Markov chain either in stats for use as part of Markov chain Monte Carlo simulations to simulate distributions, or if you're doing some kind of boundary rational model or even a game theory model um, with Markov perfect equilibrium, there's a lot of opportunities to use a Markov chain in which the behavior going forward in the next period depends on what, where you were at the moment only. This ends up being represented nicely in many cases by matrix, and we can use these type of techniques for there as well. So these sort of techniques using vectors and matrices um, come up a lot in quantitative methods overall. And the good news is you didn't have to go through any of the stuff you did before, um, and maybe you didn't yet um, in cal doing calculus or probability to get to here, because all we're gonna end up doing for a lot of the stuff is doing algebra, um, but a, a little more of it than before. And mostly what linear algebra um, ends up being is understanding some theor theoretical ideas and keeping track of notation and placement in vectors and matrices, which is a tricky part. But a lot of it um, is, is, in some senses, more straightforward than the more complicated ideas of limits and integration and differentiation and so on. This is very straightforward. It's just keeping track of where all the, the components of these things are and then manipulate them appropriately in the appropriate manner, rather. Um, so that's sort of an overview. We'll discuss this more conceptually in the next lecture.
And this lecture, again, just the nuts and bolts of how to do this stuff, which is why we call it fun with um, vectors and matrices in the book. Um, so having said all this stuff, what are these things? Well, we'll save matrices for later, but let's talk about vectors. Actually, let's talk about scalars first instead of vectors. A scalar is any single component or single element thing. Typically, we'll assume a scalar is just a real number. So a scalar could be x1, which is an element of the real numbers usually, or it could be x2, or it could be gamma, or any other single number of the kind you've been dealing with the entire time in this course. And the entire and the kind you've been dealing with your entire life, basically, right? One, two, three, four, these are all scalars. A scalar is, has a single component to it. Um, and these are all scalars. A vector is a collection of scalars that has certain properties. A vector um, comes in two varieties. A row vector has multiple components arranged in a row. And you can have as many components as you want in a vector. A column vector, as you might guess, has a number of elements arranged in a column. You have cause to deal with both kinds of vectors in this course and in political science. All a vector is, for our purposes at least, is a collection of scalars. The dimension of a vector is the number of components or the number of elements. And elements and component mean the same thing here. They're a single spot in the vector. The number of elements or the number of components is a dimension of the, major, of the vector. So this row vector is a four-dimensional vector. This column vector is a five-dimensional vector. And that's what a vector is really, as far as we're concerned. It's a, it's a collection of elements. That's it. What we're gonna do in this, in this lecture is go through and learn how to manipulate these vectors, which involves things like addition and subtraction and multiplication of different types. And most of the complication will arise in operations that don't have an obvious um, answer, right? So a little preview, you might think that addition is pretty straightforward, and it is. If you're adding two vectors, you can add the corresponding components. If you're adding, um, if you're multiplying a single scalar by a vector, you might think one way to do it is to multiply that scalar by all the elements of the vector, and you'll be right. But if you're multiplying vectors, it's less obvious how to do that. Um, so we will discuss how that works um, in the next um, few lectures, next few modules rather. Um, for now though, all we're concerned with is sort of basic definitions. A scalar is a single element vector. A vector has a collection of elements or components in it. Its dimension is the number of elements. And we typically, um, to make life easy for us, denote each individual element by a subscript for one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Sometimes, sometimes you start at zero, sometimes one. It doesn't really matter, as long as you're consistent. We write these things. A scalar is going to be just a lowercase letter. Now, a vector, how you write it depends on what you're printing up. In books, typically a vector is in boldface. So if I could somehow make a boldface, I could draw this like this. You know what? I'm going to switch to blue here for that and try to draw a really thick blue line here. This would be a bold, this would be a vector x, and this would be a scalar x because I don't want to spend a lot of my life drawing lines over and over again on the screen. Um, what you often see when you're when you're um, writing on say a, a like a whiteboard in a classroom is you see this notation for vector that little part arrow means vector that means this is it's a x is a vector here and not a scalar so an x by itself for the rest of this lecture will mean a scalar um, a bold face x or much more commonly an x with a vector over it is going to be a vector x. And you see later, a matrix will be a capital X. And in all cases, we'll be clear. I'll be clear about what those things are. But that's it. Um, that's the basics. And again, um, linear algebra is used for a bunch of stuff. We'll talk more about that next lecture. Here, we'll talk about the nuts and bolts of linear algebra. Thank you very much.